Hello, um, my name is Philip Jonker and I'm a sculptor. Um, first slide. Um, my work is about appreciation and uh, finding new ways of looking at stuff, looking at, you know, stuff. This is a pallet and I used so much pallets in my life already and that one day I wanted to honor the pallet by making a pallet out of the most beautiful wood I can find. So this is like five different types of very expensive wood. And then suddenly you get uh, something strange happens because you get a desire for this pallet. You actually really want to have it. You want to buy it. At the same time, you cannot use it anymore because it's heavy and you are scared that you get a little scratch in it. In this work, I got the same thing. I was kind of fed up with all this extreme big Andre Hazes like uh, funerals with 20 Cadillacs. And the essence is actually that you want to carry your loved one to uh, the graveyard <laughs> by yourself. At the moment, I'm uh, just finished building this uh, church out of uh, Lego blocks. It's in Enschede. It was a festival pavilion, and they actually asked me, can you make a festival pavilion we can use every time? So we did use Lego blocks. It's still there in uh, Enschede. But I want to tell you about Honeycomb Cardboard and the Cardboard Tugboat de Fury. Honeycomb cardboard is like a uh, light, sustainable, super stuff you can use for anything, but it's not uh, water resist at all. And at that point I wanted to try to find the biggest, biggest contrast. So honeycomb cardboard is it waterproof, so you make a boat. And what kind of boat? You make a tugboat, because a tugboat, you know, they are like the, the tractors of the sea. If you're stuck in the iceberg or somewhere, you will pulled out by a tugboat. And they also got like names like Avenger and like Goliath. So I wanted to make a tugboat out of cardboard. A bigger contrast isn't possible. So the building of the cardboard, the tugboat from waterproof honeycomb cardboard. Uh, this is the drawing. It's a boat. It's seven meters long, two more six meters wide, and it's five tons. It's a little, very small tugboat. So I needed the drawings. So I went to Freepak. Freepak is like a vessel designer, and, they, uh, and I asked him, yeah, I'm gonna make a cardboard tugboat. <laughs> and <laughs> can I use your drawings? And I said, well, um, well, um, go ahead. So I got the <laughs> slide. These are the drawings of when you normally, if you make a boat, the shipbuilder uses these drawings. These are all the pieces. And I printed them out on a slide, on big canvas. So this is like, I printed them out like on, on, on canvas, like size one to one. And then I could cut them out and I could use all the pieces to copy them with the cardboard. So you see this is uh, on the, the hull is made of this honeycomb cardboard and I could well, cut it, just cut it out and you know, put it on. And this is the honeycomb which I impregnated with, uh, with some kind of spray, which hopefully would work to get it more water resistant. And then I put some uh, you know, paper on it. And we put some special coating on it. I was a German company, was specialized in that. And uh, here, I had to flip the boat to, you know, to make it uh, bigger. And then my brother came to help me. And you see that here the, the ship really gets its shape. I also have to do more, more, I had to make more trusts and more, you see also on the, on the back end, you see this uh, horizontal trust. That's like what no boat has, only cardboard boats have that because you need it <laughs> to have some kind of stiffness. Well, then it was finally, you know, all made of cardboard. The, um, the baiting, I don't know how it's called in English, it's the thing where you pull the other boat with, is uh, made out of um, carpet rolls, you know, when you buy carpet then there's the very strong rolls, so I used them uh, at the back. Then I asked uh, an engine company to, well, can you help me with the, with the motor? And they said, well, yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it really works like that, strangely enough. We painted the ship, and then, of course, we had to get it out of my atelier, which was, 
a bit too small, so we had to, to flip it on the side. Then, of course, then there's this moment that it has to be launched. And you should think that uh, first you got, uh, you got like a, a sculpture of a boat out of cardboard, and then it turns into a machine, you know, because it actually moves. It, uh, it, uh, you know, if you press the lever, you will just sail away. So this is uh, our first trip. We went on the, from Enschede, Enschede is in the east, to Rotterdam, and from there on to England. So here we arrive at, uh, over there at the Erasmusbrug. This is, you know, on the back of this uh, uh, place. It's very small ship. Um, <laughs> the guy in the middle, oh, yes. The guy in the middle with the red thing, that's like the boss of the harbor here. And he wanted to go on my ship, but uh, I was a little bit scared because I never actually sailed a ship before. <laughs> and the, the marine ship on the back, he was my escort, but it was like, uh, I was very in, uh, you know, I, got, I was a little bit scared of the other boat. <laughs> yeah. So then at one point, uh, uh, of course, we had to do the real, you know, going, really going to sail to, uh, to England. Um, this is like a map of the sea, and uh, at, you're in Rotterdam, and you probably know that this is the most busiest piece of sea in the whole world. And I was on a seven-meter ship, which isn't visible on the radar because it's made out of cardboard. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> I was uh, I was really scared. This is the distance from uh, you know Rotterdam to uh, Ramsgate. It's quite a quite a distance. And um, well, we set off in the morning, it uh, went all okay. I asked uh, another ship if you could escort me, because uh, also to film it, and also to uh, save me if something uh, had gone. <laughs> On the right, right side, you see how small we actually are. It's like, uh, you're really, really tiny. And I also forgot, um, that's maybe stupid, but I forgot how uh, big uh, the sea is. Because normally you're on a river or on a canal, and then you got a side, and, and if something goes wrong, you just you can swim to the other side. <laughs> but then you're suddenly in 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 the in the open sea, and then you realize that, um, well, <laughs> it can also get bad weather. I don't know if this is this is a movie. I just want to show you that we got um, quite some weather. Yeah, that was really nice. But it was also very, I was uh, kind of scared. <laughs> if I see it now, it's, uh, it's laughable, but at the moment it was uh, <laughs> really, really like. Well, we ended uh, up in uh, Ramsgate, it's over there. And uh, in Ramsgate, uh, we could uh, uh, pump out the ship, all the water would get into the ship because it wasn't that waterproof at all. Uh, but it still worked. Here we arrive in Ramsgate, and this is where we pump out the ship. You see all these hoses. And then we set sail up to London, and then we were back on the river again. It's quite a distance to London again. And then seeing a city from the river is really, is really, well, the best way to enter a city. And this is uh, my girlfriend, and now she's my wife. She, um, she, was, she was on the ship, and I, um, now, that's it. Actually. 